Can a PC that fits in the palm of your hand actually replace your desktop? Well, in today's video, we're going to show you just that. This is the Geekom AE7 Mini PC, and Geekom was nice enough to sponsor this video to showcase its Ryzen 9 processor, 32 gigs of DDR5 memory, and those 780M graphics, while not necessarily designed for gaming, can definitely do some gaming on the side. So what we're gonna do is open this thing up, take a look at the Mini PC, run it through the benchmarks we normally do here on the channel, and show you guys why this might be the Mini PC for you. All right, guys, so we're gonna open up this AE7 Mini PC, which we did get a little sneak peek at to get set up for this video, but it is a really compact oh. mini PC from Geekom that has a lot of port selection. Yeah, I'm, I'm not used to like a, a silver mini PC either. Normally they're just kind of like straight jet black, but I kind of like this refreshing design and wow, this does have a lot of ports on it. We gotta talk about these. So on the front side, we have a USB 3.0 that is also a charging port. We have another USB 3.0. We have a combo headphone jack, a power button, a full-size SD card reader on the side. That's actually pretty handy for anybody doing content creation because you can definitely do that with this PC. Now the back of this mini PC has a ton of ports. So starting off on the right-hand side, we have a USB Type-C that is also a display adapter. We have a full-size HDMI, another USB 3.0, a USB 2.0, a 2.5 gigabit ethernet. This right here is a USB Type-C 4.0, an HDMI full size once again, and then our 19 volt power jack, and then we just have a Kingsington lock on the other side, and the bottom and the top are pretty bare. So yeah, this is a content creation and workstation focused mini PC rather than gaming focused, and for those who are in, let's say, graphic design or intro level video editing, having a really compact computer like this you can take with you on the go, maybe even mount to the back of a monitor if you want to with some of the accessories that are included, it's a really cool option for those who want something space saving. Yeah, and then um, power brick's actually pretty small you know it's a separate uh, brick from the wall adapter uh, this one is a 120 watt so not super serious on the power draw which may be a concern of some people um, yeah it comes with some screws here so that you can do like some basic base mounting you do get a full-size HDMI cable as well uh, here and we actually mm -hmm. have a plate for base mounting so yeah and that's pretty much it um, do you want to open it up? Yeah, let's see if we can get her open pretty easily. With these mini PCs, it's always cool to see what kind of expansion options you have. This one does come packed full of 32 gigs of DDR5 memory with that Ryzen 9 7940HS, which is an 8-core 16 thread, by the way. And I do believe it comes with a one terabyte SSD as well. So we'll see what the configuration looks like on the inside and uh, show you guys some upgrade options as well. Long ass screws. Long ass screws for a tiny ass computer. So we got four screws with the feet. I like that we don't have to do the crap where you like have to peel the feet off to get to the yes. screws. Like they don't hide them. They, they let you get to them. Good on Keycom for that. Oh, Whoa. and just rips out like that. Oh, direct access to everything. Yeah. Wow. So look at that. I love seeing this. We actually have name brand stuff. We got uh, Crucial RAM and this is DDR5. This is just laptop sodium RAM. DDR5, 5600 megahertz, two sticks. That's pretty cool. Um, now the NVMe, that's a... Not really sure what that would come to. Wu-Posit? <laughs> oh, hold up. Wu-Posit, right? Wu-Posit. <laughs> yeah, Wu-Posit. I have not heard of Wu-Posit. Maybe Wu-Posit is like an OEM for right. some other... It, it is a Gen 4, though. Gen 4 NVMe, one terabyte. Um, obviously, like, guys, expansion, these aren't really designed for that. Um, I wouldn't be surprised, though. I just don't know... Oh, it looks like it comes right off. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's just oh, the cooler... there's a fan, yeah. Um, I'm just curious if, like, you could put in a, a two and a half inch drive. And after looking, for a minute before we realize. So this is the mount for a two and a half inch SSD. So then you just put the SSD in there and then you put it back in like that. Um, but it's cool too. There's also this, which is like a heat sink for the NVMe so that it keeps it nice and cool. But yeah, I mean, inside's pretty basic. Like I said, the top here, I guess this is so you can access the fan. I don't really know why else you need to be able to take it off, but that part was toolless, which is nice. But Pretty good looking design. I guess we'll plug it in and you know, make sure it turns on. Yeah, make sure it turns on. Obviously with these mini PCs as well, you can run eGPUs as well. If that's something that you can use in your workflow, have an eGPU set up. Um, but with the 780M graphics, we will play some games, our typical esports titles, and show you guys how that newer Ryzen CPU can carry the 780M graphics in most games and get 60 plus FPS. And then we're gonna focus more on some workstation level tasks. We'll run Cinebench to see the CPU score and talk more about how it works in applications like Premiere Pro or Photoshop or things like that. And uh, yeah, really showcase this little tiny computer that has a lot of power under the hood. All right, guys, we are playing some Overwatch 2.0 and we are currently at 1080p. Uh, and then we're running a just low quality preset. I'm not using any upscaling or anything. Uh, and 
yeah, I remember, hey, look how much RAM we're using. And that's <laughs> using obviously, all that DDR5. yeah, we're, we're borrowing some of that RAM uh, to be able to use for our integrated graphics, but this is this is playable. Yeah, definitely playable. Again, gaming is not the primary focus of this device, but if you were gonna game on it, uh, Overwatch and other eSports titles, we got Hog, uh, would definitely be the ideal situation for it. I gotta feel chunky. Huh. Kowser, can you put uh, Jonah's head on Widowmaker's body? Please. Oh my god. Please. <laughs> that Please. Like really weird hitching. You see that? Oh my god, I'm gonna get. Okay. Oh, oh god. Oh god. It's so chunky. It's getting chunkier. Sounds about right. Back check real quick. I can't heal them. I'm being pushed back. I guess you can just die too. Either way, it's cool. Oh god. god! Got a Roadhog's trap's kind of good. Roadhog's a trap. Huh? What? Why is this? Oh, the freaking Mercy was hiding <laughs> in it. I was like, why is it not moving? You know what? I'm gonna say it. I wish, I wish actually he was here. Mm. He'd be a better Mercy. Oh, we can get him, team. We can get him, team. Don't let him eat that Ooh. mango. Don't let him eat that mango. No mango. You're going, huh? I bet he. How it? Oh! Oh, they have a Mercy, don't they? I was like, how is he alive? Oh, you better do him dirty, Reaper. You better do him dirty. I got your heels inside the hog. Ugh. Oh no, everyone's dying. Oh my god, literally everyone's dying. Dude, turn around. There's someone next to you. Oh, we need, we need to kill this hog. Yes. Oh, like Ooh, and now, now we can get this little guy. There's no way he's, okay, he's not jumping away this time. We cannot risk the death. Ooh, I like the Reinhardt pick here. Yep, this, this is about to be a crazy little Elvis comeback story. I can just feel it. Yeah! Oh, he didn't, he didn't kill anyone. Reinhardt, what happened? Okay. Okay, my teammates are dwindling. Oh. oh no! Teammates are dwindling again. Hey, hey Re Reaper, everyone's dead, Reaper. Reaper! Oh, he's ulting, okay. Weird flex. I'm dying from behind. I need this healing orb. Where'd they go? Oh, why is he ulting? Oh! Wait, can I no yes. shot, I just killed him in his ult. Oh, he's upset. Oh, buddy, they have a somber. Why are you playing Widow? Just switch. Oh, no, God. Thank you. Don't worry, I got you. Thing yep, yep, the healers. Oh, gotta... <laughs> GG's. GG. Well, we tried, but I mean, the mini PC, it did good, but I will say, you almost want to, like, if you're doing heavy gaming, they go 720p or put a fan on this thing because it does great when it can actually cool itself. Yeah, it looks like TDP wise, it did go down as well. We we're at like the 54 watt range, but it did go down. So obviously under gaming load, it's gonna stress the thing a little hard. Let's try another esports title like Fortnite, which might not be as hard on the GPU. All right, guys, we're in Fortnite, DX12, 120 FPS lock, far view distance, low textures across the board. And <clears throat> so far, not looking too bad. We'll go ahead and drop in on classy courts and see what this little Ryzen 9 is capable of. The FPS is, FPS is what I kind of expect it to be. We're getting 60 to 80 FPS. This uh, game doesn't push the uh, CPU nearly as hard um, as uh, Overwatch would, but hey, we're still getting some, again, for a non-gaming PC, playable results. Again, just a disclaimer here, as you can see, as we play this game longer, our overall TDP on the iGPU is dropping a little bit, which means this thing isn't great for full sustained loads on the GPU. Um, but hey, that's a full gaming load compared to what it is designed for. So just something to keep in mind, um, you probably won't get the maximum game performance from the 780M with this mini PC. Woo! Mm, but you won't miss your shots, ya. Yeah. You two, hey boys, cut it. Boys. Cut it, cut, cut it out. Cut it out. Yeah, buddy. Maybe. <laughs> I, all my luck wore out. I was hitting all the shots and now. No. <laughs> they were just going. <laughs> Yeehaw, buddy. <laughs> oh, God. Wait. Wait. Oh, yeah. Oh. Here we go. <laughs> Yeehaw. Oh, that's fire. We can't even do anything about it. Ooh. But yeah, guys, you know what? I'm gonna say Fortnite, playable. Cool to see that uh, the uh, tow hook cannon is an addition to the game. It was actually kind of cool. But again, 
gaming wise, it's not going to be perfect. This is definitely a casual gaming machine. Retro games, you could definitely play if you wanted to, emulation, stuff like that. But what we're going to do is we're going to run some older games, some older titles that would run perfectly fine on this because, again, they're older games. Uh, we'll also run the Creative Cloud Suite. We'll, we'll pull up a, a Toasty Bros video in Adobe Premiere Pro, show you guys what scrubbing the timeline looks like in that. We'll also pull up a Photoshop uh, file. And Zach put together using um, a thumbnail that we did for the main channel. And to show you guys content creation side with this thing is capable of, along with some 3D Mark scores to uh, let you all compare at home with your uh, other PCs what you think of this little mini computer. So let's go ahead and dive into those other tests. Wrap this video up real quick. All right, guys, we just got done benchmarking the Geekcom mini gaming PC. And I would say overall in gaming, it definitely did decent, maybe a little better than we thought. But in terms of multitasking and doing things involving rendering, it did an amazing job. We decided to test this in some lower end titles as well, because obviously, again, not gaming focused, but we want to show you guys in the PC gaming space, there's a ton of games you can actually play on this thing. We ended up playing Fallout 4, a classic that's coming back because of the TV show, 1080p high settings, got around a 60 FPS average. CS2, 1080p medium settings, got 120 FPS average. And we decided to run two 3D Mark benchmarks. They have their new Steel Nomad Lite benchmark, which is the new updated benchmark that they have in the 3D Mark suite. And we got a score of 2,896. And our Time Spy score was 3,377. And you guys might be wondering, how does this thing perform in content creation tasks? We loaded up Premiere Pro, a Toasty Bros YouTube video that was fully edited, scrubbed through the timeline, made some edits, and had no problems, no drop frames. Worked really well for that. And even loaded up a Toasty Bros thumbnail in Photoshop, resized, readjusted layers, and everything was very snappy. Overall, for content creation and just being a portable PC with a Ryzen processor in it, this Geekcom PC is really solid for that. And gaming on the side is acceptable as well. So if you want to buy this mini PC for your next build, check the link in the description down below. It will be an affiliate link. It will help us out. Big shout out again to Geekcom for sponsoring today's video. And uh, let us know what other mini PCs you want to see here on the channel. And as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash Toasty Bros. And do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Bye bye Hey, mini PCs are pretty cool. We have them from time to time, but if you want to buy a big old monster gaming PC, we got you covered at PC Bros. PC Bros. Tech. We sell high-end gaming PCs and budget computers. Whatever you need, we got you covered. Use code TOASTYBROS2 on checkout. You'll save 2% on your next purchase. See you guys later. Bye-bye.